Hello, parents. Welcome to Back to School Night. My name is Jeremy Hansavada, and your child is either in my uh, Math 4 or Math 3 class. Um, uh, I have been teaching for 21 years, and I am so excited to be off of the screen and back in the classroom. Um, you know, it sucks having masks and everything, but uh, we want to be safe and keep the kids safe. So uh, it's just great to be back in the classroom with the kids. So. Um, yeah, I come from, I wanted you to know I come from a family of teachers. My mom is a retired special ed administrator and my dad is a retired college professor. And uh, I've got a teaching certificate here from uh, 1880 of a, my great great grandpa from Arkansas. Um, and uh, so my wife is a professor at Cal State Long Beach. So um, teaching is in my blood, it's what I do, I love. Uh, I love being a teacher. Um, I've taught at the elementary level, middle school, high school. I taught at UCI for three years. Um, I've been at this school since we opened, um, and I just I, I love teaching. It's it's really really fun uh, being around your kids and and just seeing uh, you know all the awesome questions that they come up with and how funny they are and everything. So um, I just want you to know that our my colleagues and I are working you know as hard as possible to make the learning experiences that your children receive in the pandemic world as meaningful as possible. And teaching with masks and sanitizing everything and all is challenging, but you know that's kind of what we do as teachers. We're used to challenges. So, uh, thank you so much for your patience and your understanding, because a lot of us have uh, children of our own, and I know that uh, all of us are doing, you know, just the best we can. So, um, I've got two daughters, uh, Misha and Sasha, that you can see in that picture right there. They were a little bit younger at that time. Now they're 13 and 10. So, um, I have just. Uh, gotten done watching uh, 10 back to school nights for their teachers. Um, and so uh, I'm sure you all have a lot of other teachers to watch. So I'll try to um, get through this quickly. Um, so this is the what I, I think I'm showing right now on the screen is um, the class uh, Schoology page for M4. And this one's for M3. Um, they're the same layout. So I'm just going to do four. Um, at the top of both of them is a syllabus, and if you click on that syllabus, it takes you to like kind of a standard syllabus that we're all the teachers at the school are supposed to have. Um, that's pretty vanilla, so I would prefer that you please click through to the full syllabus um, that has a lot more detail and is kind of uh, specified and modified for this, this class. As you can see, the M4 and M3 syllabi are basically the same. Um, in, in math three, uh, some of the math topics that we're learning are exponential and power functions, logarithms, sequences, the number E, um, circular trigonometric functions, and in M4, we're learning a little bit heavier stuff. Um, we're going to do components of velocity, the physics of falling objects. Right now, we are uh, learning something that we didn't have time for in M3 last year, circular functions. Um, really excited to do some animation and programming loops in Python and then some other stuff. Um, so yes, there's been some learning loss, uh, you know, from the pandemic, but like I said, we're all doing the best we can. Um, and my goal is to teach your children as much as I can about um, math, um, get them excited about math, um, yeah, I want to cover, you know, all the topics that we're supposed to cover, but I, I really want to inculcate a sense of curiosity and wonder um, because math can be really, really awesome. I know it can cause a lot of stress to a lot of people, but um, I love math and um, I love teaching students who hate math and or students who love math. Either way, um, I like showing them how uh, it might be different than what than what they thought it was. So um, you can read more on the syllabus if you want to. Um, we're supposed to just cover some basic things. So let me get to uh, the grading categories and percents. These are pretty much, um, you know, department-wide, the teachers in the math department at CS Arts have these. These are the exact same ones that we had uh, last year. Um, the grading scale is the school-wide grading scale. Um, for retakes. Uh, you know, here at CSR, it's one of our founding pillars that is, is that it's never too late to learn. And so if your child does poorly on a test or quiz, they have opportunities to um, show that they have that they can relearn the material and have a retake. Um, so I would encourage them to read this. 
um, if that's something they're interested in. Um, the quizzes are only worth 10% of students' grades, and so um, you know that's that's intentional. And so we hope that they are using the quizzes strategically to give them an indication of how they're doing on material, whether they should be relaxed or whether they should kind of stress out a little bit or um, you know just perk up a little bit, come into office hours. Um, let's see. I've got some habits for success here. You know, I've been teaching, like I said, I started teaching in the year 2000. Um, so I've been around a lot and um, there's, uh, you know, things that, you're, that your child can do to be successful. Um, the two most important things that your child can do are um, to participate meaningfully in class discussions, um, essentially taking an active role instead of a passive role in the learning process. Um, so participate meaningfully and then self-advocate as soon as problems arrive. Um, we teachers, uh, I have five classes of 30 students, so that's 150 students total. Some of my colleagues have six classes, um, up, to, up to 180 students. So it is really hard for us just because of the scale of our job to try to, um, you know, it is impossible for us to, to, to hold that many, um, you know, things in our arms, uh, students in our mind. I tell the students it's kind of like carrying laundry uh, you know, when you go to carry laundry and you turn around and there's like two socks on the ground and then you go down to pick up the socks. And when you pick up the socks, then you drop a shirt and a towel and all of a sudden things are falling out. So it's really helpful for us if the students can self-advocate, speak up um, and, you know, come into office hours, raise your hand in class. Uh, one of the best times is just coming to talk to me before class starts or after class ends. Um, even just like a little daily check in, like, hey, Mr. H, I just wanted to check in and um, let you know that I'm a little... Uh, was a little lost today, um, and or hey, can you look at this at my work that I was doing? Um, that just makes it so much easier when they meet us halfway. Um, I try to individualize as much as I can. I know that's like you know kind of impossible, you know, in a class full of thirty students. Um, but every student has uh, three color cups on their desk: red, yellow, and green. And so I tell them to put their red cup up uh, if they want to tell me that, that that I'm going too fast and they want me to slow down. Uh, they're supposed to put a green cup up if they are bored and they want to go faster, and then yellow cup if they're uh, if they like the pace that we're going at. So I, I do try to kind of scan the, the color of the room and see how fast or slow um, the students want me to go. Of course, I can only go at one pace at a time. Um, but if I see you know some greens over here and some reds over there or something, I can say, all right, green students, I'd like you to think about this question. Red students, uh, work on this right now, and then I'm going to come around and check um, check in with you. So I try to in individualize as much as I can, given the constraints of just the, the sheer number of students that, that we have. Um, and it's really, really helpful if your child can kind of meet me halfway and, and uh, self-advocate, speak up, communicate as much as possible um, with me. All right, I've got an FAQ here. Uh, the number one question that I get is this one, how can I improve my grade? Um, and the purpose of grades is to give stakeholders a reflection of student understanding. So what I always tell students is if you want to improve your grade, focus on improving your understanding. Focus on the understanding. And notice the answer to that question, how can I improve my understanding, is, is much longer. So the most important thing is being an active learner. The opposite of an active learner is a passive learner. I'll let you read more here. Um, but to me, this is absolutely essential to my class. Active learners know that deep, meaningful understanding comes from interaction. And then to be interactive, here are a bunch of behaviors that you can do. Um, if your child is doing this, they will be successful in my class. That's just, it's, it's impossible to do these things and not be successful. So if your child is not being as successful as you want them to be, encourage them to do more of these behaviors. Uh, if you're struggling with that, um, then I'd love to, you know, have a, a, a conference, uh, have us all get together um, and, and talk about it. I love meeting with parents and students because I find that a lot of the time there's some uh, students struggling. They're telling parents one thing and they're telling me another thing and then there's there's not, you know, uh, a consistent story. And so if we all get together, having us all in the same room, same place, um, or on the same call or Zoom call or whatever, um, we can kind of get to the bottom of it and um, figure out um, how to overcome that. I've taught over 3,000 students in my career and so, um, I've had a lot of experience with students that are struggling and uh, I've, yeah, just, just I've seen a lot. And so I, I feel like I have a lot of experience to draw on and, and uh, ways to get your students 
out of a hole if they're a little stuck. Um, the last thing is communication. The best way to communicate with me is through email. Um, and my email address is right here. You can uh, get in touch with me through Schoology. I do prefer email um, just because Schoology is a little clunky in terms of logging in. Um, and uh, there's certain types of emails uh, or responses that I want to send back that Schoology doesn't support. Um, but I'll respond if you if you um, contact me on Schoology, I'll, I'll respond that way. Um, I did want to say I know a lot of younger teachers are seemingly you know kind of on call and will respond to emails like 24 hours a day. Um, I just want to be up you know upfront and clear. I do not check email when I'm away from work because a I try to be fully present um, with when I'm around my daughters and my wife. Uh, and B, because I want to teach for two more decades and I really value my mental health. Um, and so I try to leave work at work. Um, thank you for understanding that um, and that I'm trying to balance the duties of parenting and the duties of teaching, as well as the duties of just being a sane human being. Um, and uh, let me see, let me close this out. It's been a while since I've been... Uh, on Zoom teaching. I think I just did this correctly. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, being a teacher is at the very core of my identity. Uh, it's absolutely the thing that brings me the most joy in life. I love teaching. I love teaching children of all ages, uh, but especially, you know, teenagers are so fun because um, they really ask interesting questions. Uh, and one of the things that we've, I've been talking about this with some other teachers, uh, from the pandemic, we've noticed that the kids have come back really, really curious um, and really, really eager to um, to show, to participate and interact. I think they, you know, they obviously were really affected by Zoom learning and screen learning. Um, and I think a lot of them just realized they couldn't be their best selves. And so um, coming back, they're even better than they were before in terms of just like being eager to learn. And it's, uh, I always, as a math teacher, find it really easy to get students curious and, uh, and interested. Um, and it's just been that much easier uh, since the pandemic, uh, or since we came back from the, from the Zoom learning. So anyways, um, uh, please let me know how I can help your child. Like I said, I've got a lot of experience um, dealing with struggling students, dealing with students who hate school, students who hate math, uh, students who hate uh, authority and are rebelling and all that. So. Um, if your child is going through something, there's a really good chance I, I have experience dealing with that. So please don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Um, I, I just find that it's better when we communicate and we're on the same page. So let me know how I can help you. Um, and uh, I hope you have a good night, good morning, whenever you're watching this. Goodbye.